May I, I'll, I'll speak about it, you know, why we fear bhaya, that why we, why we get, get bhaya, bhaya. so we'll, we'll speak about it. So, okay, um, okay, let's, let's start. Jaya Radha Madhava, Jaya Kunja Bihari, Jaya Radha Madhava, Jaya Kunja Bihari, Jaya Gopi Janavallabha, Girivaradhari, Jaya, sorry, Jaya Gopi Janavallabha, Girivaradhari, Yashoda Nandana Vraja Jana Ranjana, Yashoda Nandana Vraja Jana Ranjana, Yamuna Tira Vanachari, Yamuna Tira Vanachari, Jaya Radha Madhava, Jaya Kunja Bihari, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Jaya Radha, Sham Sundar Radha, Sham Sundar Radhe, Jaya Krishna Balaram, Krishna Balaram, Krishna Balaram, Jaya Krishna Balaram, Jaya Gauranitai, 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 Jaya Gauranitai, Jaya Jaya Prabhupad, 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 Jaya Srila Prabhupad, Harinam Sankirtan ki jaya, Shrimad Bhagavad Gita ki jaya, Srila Prabhupad ki jaya. Hare Krishna, thank you for joining Deepak Prabhuji, welcome. I think uh, yeah. Manju, Mata, Manju Mata ji, why uh, join hui nahi, pata nahi, but uh, Jitu Prabhu shahed, he may not have prepared for the verse, iske liye shahed join nahi hua hai. But it's okay. I'll, I'll speak to him. Yeah, we work in the same office, so, so I'll, I'll speak to him. Hare Krishna. So, Jiji Prabhu, Karima Mataji, you mentioned it was good. You liked uh, preparing for the verses. Deepak Prabhu ji, what is your experience? Hai? Yes, Prabhu ji. I, I think it is uh, since, since we start reading by ourselves, right? It yeah. gives a bit more uh, understanding. Right. So it's a listening. It's a combination of blend learning, listening and reading. Right. Correct. So Correct. I, I hope means it just started today. It is not that I would say learn too much. I hope this will continue and Definitely. it's a good approach. I think. Yeah. yeah. So my personal experience has been that uh, um, I did my Bhakti Shastri course in uh, somewhere around 2006, seven times. And Badme uh, Shrimad Bhagavatam ka Bhakti Vaibhav and all that wagare also happened. Now, uh, after that, meaning 2012-13 ke time pe, I had thought ke are mirko Bhagavad Gita aati hai. Because Bhakti Shastri ho gaya, Bhagavatam ka bhi ho gaya and all that wagare. But when I started my first Bhagavad Gita class somewhere in 2017, the first chapter it's more of stories and all that of Mahabharat and all that. So, this is not so difficult, tha, but the second chapter is not so difficult. So, then I realized that I know hardly anything about Bhagavad Gita. And uh, then I started you know, focusing on preparing myself for various the verses that I was going to take. So, I used to read lectures, make my notes, unko question answers mein convert karna and all that started. So, I was like, 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 I
तो मेरा पूरा वन फुल भगवत गीता ऑल एटीन चैप्टर सिखाने के बाद वेन आई स्टार्टेड विद फर्स्ट चैप्टर सेकेंड चैप्टर अगेन देन आई रियलाइज की पहले मेरे को कुछ नहीं आता था अभी आई नो थोड़ा थोड़ा जब वो सेकंड वाला कंप्लीट हो गया एंड थर्ड पे आ गया तो मेरे को रियलाइज हुआ कि नाउ आई नो मोर देन व्हाट आई न्यू फॉर द सेकंड टाइम एंड दैट कंटिन्यू टू हैपन नाउ दिस इज प्रोबेबली द फोर्थ और फिफ्थ फिफ्थ टाइम है जो पूरा भगवत गीता सिखा रहे हैं तो आई फील नाउ आई नो मोर देन दैट तो दिस जर्नी ऑफ डिस्कवरिंग मोर एंड मोर और और द डेप्थ ऑफ भगवत गीता विल कंटिन्यू एंड टू गिव एन एग्जांपल ऑफ व्हाट इज द डेप्थ ऑफ भगवत गीता I'll give you one small example. So in Maharashtra, we have one, we had one saintly person, Gyaneshwar, Sant Gyaneshwar. You might have all, all of you may have heard of his name. So this person, um, he was like a born gifted person, and at the age of nine, he started teaching Bhagavad Gita to the villagers. And he, at the age of sixteen. he wrote a book called as nyaneshwari so nyaneshwari is the simplified form of bhagavad gita so if you have one verse in bhagavad gita nyaneshwari would have eight abhangas in bhagavad gita uska wo ratio hai 1 is to 8 itna simplify kiya hai usne so when i read part of it tab mujhe matlab there is one verse 26th verse in 9th chapter patram pushpam phalam to yam where krishna says i accept a leaf fall flower water if somebody offers me with devotion to krishna sirf itna bolta hai ki i accept but nyaneshwari mein the sant gyaneshwar he goes multiple steps ahead to see say how does krishna accept it aisa wo wo depth pe gaya hai now such a person who took uh, samadhi at the age of 21 okay we can imagine his level of spiritual knowledge and wisdom and devotion towards krishna to unke comparison mein we are not even a small mole compared to he being a mount everest such a person such a person in the introduction to gyaneshwari he writes that i am a very lowly person Okay, I have attempted to simplify Bhagavad Gita for the common people because Bhagavad Gita is so complex and so deep that even Mahadev, huh, Bhagwan Shankar, he reads Bhagavad Gita on a daily basis, and he is mesmerized by the depth of its meaning every day. So we can imagine the. Um, person like bhagwan shankar that he is saying that he is mesmerized by the depth of bhagavad gita on a daily basis so can we expect to understand and be able to practice bhagavad gita in one single lifetime it's impossible but does it mean that we should not start no we have to start somewhere so this is an attempt to start so whatever we are doing now we are trying to learn bhagavad gita step by step by step it is just a start we don't know when krishna will be happy with us and when will he you know uh, basically say now your journey on this material planet is done with you come back to me but until then we have to keep studying practicing studying practicing and teaching bhagavad gita to others meaning as i mentioned in one of the earlier classes every one of you should keep an objective that learning and practicing bhagavad gita is not enough i will teach at least one person full bhagavad gita in my lifetime that should be your motto if you are able to do that that will be far more satisfying to krishna than you studying yourself Uh, i i will show you one verse um, where krishna talks about uh, how he appreciates uh, when when people talk about bhagavad gita this is in 1868 and 69 just one moment i'm sharing it Okay, are you able to see? 
Yes, Prabhu. Okay. So, verse number 69, Krishna says, For one who explains uh, this supreme secret to the devotees, pure devotional service is guaranteed and the, at the end he will come back to me. So, and then another, there is no servant in this world more dear to me than he, nor will there ever be one more dear. So, Krishna wants this to be preached to maximum number of people. And I declare that he who studies this sacred conversation of ours worships me by his intelligence. Yeah, it's very important this point. What does intelligence mean? Intelligence is basically being able to discriminate between right and wrong. Uh, to understand that these benefits of karma kanda, uh, these heavenly pleasures, they are temporary. Anything that we try to achieve in the material world is temporary. So intelligence is to understand this as temporary and go for a permanent happiness. And uh, so Krishna also gave an instruction to Arjun that he should preach Bhagavad Gita to everyone else. So this is what Krishna wants us to do and we should focus on doing that. So what you have done now is just a first step forward on this journey. Okay. And the best method to learn something is to teach ourselves or at least others. So, excellent. Many thanks for um, taking that effort to prepare for your verses. Pray Krishna. So, shall we uh, do a quick recap of what we did last week? We did 51, 52 and 53. Can anybody... Mention what was covered in that verse. Hare Krishna. Who can recap? One was that uh, when we perform our karma without uh, being attached to the results and each time giving the result in the lotus feet of uh, Krishna as in its fruits or its result, giving the re result in his lotus feet, we are free from the bondage of the birth and the death uh, cycle that we are Correct. in. Correct. Nice. Nice. And uh, 52? We talked about uh, this point, right? When your intelligence has passed out of the dense forest of delusion, you shall become indifferent to all that has been heard and all that is to be heard. Can someone explain what the meaning of this one is? Deepak Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu, just one minute. I'm just... Jijit Prabhu? Here, the dense forest is uh, described um, by the, I mean, the the teachings of the Vedas and Upanishads. So, where they teach that, you know, you do this, you get that, you do this, you get that, like the glory of the fruits. Correct. When you would have crossed that stage of, you know, being fascinated by the Vedas' glory, that is when, after that is when you will reach to a stage where you will be indifferent to to the you know the glory and you follow the Krishna's path which was told in the previous verse. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, Prabhu, Prabhu, it is uh, like uh, Karam Kanda se upar utke and insan Karam Kanda se upar utke then only he can reach to that level of Divya Chetna. Correct, correct. So, uh, so all that is to be heard and all that has been heard, what does this mean? So basically, please. our society. Ah, please, please, Mataji. Yes. No, no, no. Please, you continue. I like to listen. So the society has taught us certain things, right? We we talked about this one, and those things are not necessarily oriented towards the ultimate objective of human life. So society teaches, okay, you go to temple, you give something to the god, and you should ask something from God, 
एंड प्रॉब्लम हो गया इमीडिएटली भागो भागो भगवान के पास एंड ऑल दैट वगैरह राइट सो दीज आर बेसिकली इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स और मेथड्स बाय विच वी ट्रीट गॉड एज सम काइंड ऑफ यू नो अ सप्लायर और फुलफिलर ऑफ अवर ऑर्डर तो घर पे कोई सर्वेंट बैठा रहता है तो हम लोग उसको कैसे बोलते चलो खाना लगाओ चलो खाना बनाओ चलो ये लेके आओ ये करो वो करो एंड ऑल दैट सो वी आर ट्रीटिंग गॉड इन अमिलर मैनर इट्स जस्ट दैट वी हैव सम सॉर्ट ऑफ कंट्रोल ओवर अवर सर्वेंट हियर वी डोंट हैव अ कंट्रोल दैट्स वाई वी प्रे टू गॉड की डू इट करके बिकॉज यू नो गॉड हैज द इंडिपेंडेंस ही कैन डिसाइड नॉट टू डू इट so to rather than going in an authoritative manner you go in a prayerful mood ki bhai please karoge kya sort of bas itna hi difference hai otherwise order still remains the same how you communicate that order is the only difference this is what our society has taught us so far but bhagavad gita rejects it completely and you can imagine we are just around 100 verses completed here 46 verses uh, in the first chapter and now this is the 53 52nd 53rd verse so 99 verses 600 more verses are there and at this point winning just 100 verses around her completed and he has rejected karma kanda by now completely so now what remains is selfless uh, walking on the path of path towards krishna there are multiple paths which we will learn as we go forward but whichever path we go across it is a selfless path the previous path karma kanda was a selfish path so that is what he is talking about and finally 53 anybody remembers prabhu uh, 53 uh, is about uh, a person who is self realized or uh, let's say krishna conscious person uh, of course he will not be disturbed by anything with of sense gratification or anything of the vedas that will give him fruitful benefits uh, from the let's say pious activities mm. and uh, of course his mind will be fixed only one thing krishna bhagwan krishna so of course yeah. he will definitely go back to or he or she will definitely go back to krishna done excellent so thank you any question or shall we start today's verses any question jijit prabhu garima mata ji roini mata ji dipak prabhu questions uh, will be based on the incoming ones <laughs> okay fine uh, garima mata ji ha uh, hare krishna prabhu ji so Our next things, word... things... Uh, yes please sorry sorry i thought that we are starting on the next uh... Ali uh, I just wanted to see whether whatever we have learned so far is that clear with you is there anything uh... Yeah I had a doubt I was also trying to figure out what was the doubt that something very interesting I read in the purport that day so which I wanted to be taken up but it's not striking me as of now we can continue it's more of self realization and the divine consciousness and uh, which is here i think it's given importance to the samadhi and uh, all i mean is that what i get from it is it is this the one or there is something else fine a very good question what does that samadhi actually mean we will talk about it yeah okay, okay so let's start with verse number uh, 54 so this is uh, garima mata ji's verse okay so yeah, generally what we do is uh, we uh, read the verse and whoever verse it is that person also chants after me then that way we chant the whole verse then the person whose verse is to be spoken that person will read the translation and then he will explain whatever according to his understanding is and if if any point needs to be added i will add that so let's follow this स्थित किभाषेत 
Can you read the translation? Ji Hare Krishna. Uh, so this particular verse um, is actually uh, is the is what Arjuna is now asking. Previously, oh. we've been listening to what Krishna had said. So verse number 50, so 54 is Arjun Uvacha. Arjun says that, O oh Lord, the one who is situated, so it's referring to the Krishna consciousness, which we had spoken in the verse 53, that who who the person he's referring to the person who is who who is in the krishna conscious oh sorry i was supposed to read translation first sorry i'll yeah. read the translation first and then the meaning yeah. arjuna says said oh krishna what are the symptoms of the one whose consciousness is thus thus merged with the transcendence how does he speak what is his language how does he sit and how does he walk so um, in the previous verse, as we have all listened, that Krishna is talking about being in the um, surrender mode, being in the Krishna conscious mode by the divine and not being uh, deviated by the Vedic language. So on, on that, Arjun is now asking to Krishna, O oh Krishna, if that person exists, say the person who is in the Krishna, uh, Krishna consciousness, how does he walk? How does he think? How does he talk? And how does he feel? Because in the regular normal uh, world, when we say that a person, particular person is say rich or a poor or unhealthy or healthy, he or she, by its talking, walking, thinking, reflects the symptoms of it. You know, he the, the sick will reflect that he is deceased. So the rich will reflect that he is rich. Why? So the, Krishna, the Arjun being very uh, inquisitive, he's asking that how is that Krishna conscious? How do I recognize the person who is in the Krishna consciousness? Yeah. On to that, it is summarized as uh, the man who is in the Krishna, the man is best judged when the person speaks. It's the speech of the person which by which you can judge the uh, judge the person the best. Say, for example, if if you if there is a fool or there is a very intelligent person, you will not be able to judge them by the face value till the time the person speaks. The moment the person speaks, you will be able to know, you'll be able to judge that, oh, this person is a fool or this person is very intelligent intelligent. So here Krishna is emphasizing on the speech. He says that it is possible to discover a Krishna conscious person. He speaks and he also reveals the fact that the Krishna conscious person will only speak Krishna matters related to him. So his everything uh, would be related to Krishna when he speaks. So Krishna, Krishna, Krishna is what you will hear from a person who is into the divine consciousness of the Krishna. You know, he'll not talk anything else. He'll just talk Krishna, maybe learning lessons, bhakti or whatever. Right. That is what we will call it as the person who is in a Krishna consciousness. Correct. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's it. If anybody has any doubts or Prabhuji, you want to, I missed yeah. out something, please. Yeah, no, no, quite nice, very nice. Yeah. So basically, now, um, why does Arjun ask this question? Any uh, guesses? Yeah, because probably in his regular life, he's finding to be that kind of a person very questionable, you know, who's not fruit related, who's not who's not orienting his attached to the results of the person. And, and Krishna wants him to be something that he's like, oh, how can that be possible sort of a, uh, inquisitiveness? OK, so not exactly that one. The reason, two reasons, one is uh, today we find uh, such di persons difficult uh, to exist. Yeah. But this is about 5,000 odd years back, wherein materialism hadn't penetrated society so much. So people did do tapasya and all that. So, so that, that was one reason. Secondly, we should understand that uh, if you remember, uh, Arjun asked how many questions in the first chapter? Four. Correct. 
and one more question was asked in the second chapter. Correct? Remember this? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So these four questions of first chapter, uh, three and a half questions were answered from verse number 11 uh, till verse number 37. So question one was answered from 11 till 30. Uh, question two and three were answered from uh, verse number 31 till 37. And the fourth question was partially answered in verse 31 to 37. And the remaining answer will come in the 24th verse of the third chapter. But his fifth question was has not been answered. Anybody remembers what that fifth question is? No? Oh. Okay. Let's read the translation. Nor do we know which is better, conquering them or being conquered by them. If we kill the sons of Dhritarashtra, we should not care to live. Yet they are now standing before us on the battlefield. Okay. And he says now, okay. I am confused about my duty. This is one very important and a famous verse of Bhagavad Gita. I am confused about my duty. I have lost all composure. Okay. In this condition, I am asking you to tell me for certain what is best for me. I am your disciple and a soul surrendered unto you. Please instruct. So what question is he asking? What is best for me? Okay. Meaning he has multiple options. To fight and get killed. To fight and kill the Kauravas. To not fight at all. To run away from the battlefield. Okay. Or to stand uh, unarmed on the battlefield and be killed by Dhritarashtra, uh, sons of Dhritarashtra. Or to go away from the battlefield, take a begging bowl in hand and go from door to door, ask for bhiksha, which is not what a Kshatriya is supposed to do. So multiple options are there and he knows none of the option is perfect. He knows that. So that's why he's saying, I'm, I'm not aware what to do. So please tell me for certain. Okay. Now, he is saying, uh, okay, we'll leave this verse number eight. Okay. So now he is not aware what he is supposed to do. And that's why he is telling Krishna, you tell me. Now, has Krishna answered him? What do you think? Krishna has only talked about Karma Kanda. He has talked about the drawbacks of Karma Kanda and positives of Buddhi Yoga. Does that answer the question? He says, you fight, that he is said. But that's not still a convincing argument which will tell Arjun why he should fight. So now, that's why Arjun is asking, because Krishna says that you should remain, you are fixed in the trance of self-realization, which means you become a yogi. That is what Krishna is telling Arjun. Now, Arjun is thinking, at one end, you are telling me, fight. At the other end, you are telling me, become a yogi. At the other end, you are telling me, do your karma without any results. At the other end, in verse number 49, he has told, Krishna has told him, keep all abominable activities far distant by devotional service. So, Arjun thinks that he has now only two options with him, to fight or not to fight. So he is thinking, if I fight, then I will be killing my uh, relatives and friends. And that killing, he thinks that as abominable activity. And if he doesn't fight, then that will be inaction. Krishna is saying, no, you have to do your karma. Karmanya vadhika raste maafale shukadachana. You cannot avoid doing karma. So he has to perform karma. But he should not kill people. That is also not possible. If he fights, he has to fight to vict for victory only. 
he cannot fight and play toy games over there and let Dhritarashtra's son kill him. That's not possible. So now Arjun is confused. He is wondering what he is supposed to do. So that's why Krishna, because he tells him become a yogi. So Arjun is now trying to find out at one end you are telling me to fight and at the other end you are telling me to become a yogi. So Arjun is trying to find out does a yogi fight? Because he has not seen yogis fight. He has seen only yogis who do tapasya. So he is wondering if an opportunity is present, will a yogi fight? So that's why he is trying to find out the symptoms of a person who is yogi according to Krishna. So he is trying to find out from Krishna whether a yogi fights or doesn't fight. And to find that out, Arjun is asking four questions. How does he speak? Which actually means what are the symptoms of the person? Okay. Meaning as Mataji rightly mentioned, when a person speaks, okay, he communicates about himself. And the speak doesn't mean it is only via the mouth. The body language is also a way of communicating. The way one dresses is also a, a person communicates about himself, which is basically we can co combine all of this to say these are the symptoms of a person, right? Then the second one is what is his language? So how does he communicate? So how does his, this person respond to situations in life? How does he behave? How does he react? to different kind of situations in life. Then how does he sit? Okay. When we say we sit, we basically are saying that it is related with sense control. So he is asking how does this person restrain or control his senses, keep them disciplined and under control. Okay. And the last one, how does he walk? Which means how does he engage with the rest of the world? So, majority of the people are materialistic, but there are certain sadhus also. So, when these sadhus interact with these materialistic people, how do they interact? How do they uh, engage with the world? That these are his internal questions. So, that what he does is basically he tries to play a bit smart with Krishna. He asks about the symptoms of a yogi. But he does not ask the question directly. He asks his question indirectly. So Krishna is smarter than him. He also answers his, uh, sorry, he, uh, he also answers this direct question about symptoms of a yogi. He does not ask his indirect question about whether a yogi will fight or not. Okay. Now, how do we understand all of this? Is it our um, kind of, you know, Mental speculation? No, it is not. Okay. In chapter number three, the first two questions, okay, uh, asked are asked by Arjun again. Why does he ask this? First, let us read the question. Oh, Janardan, oh, Keshav, why do you want me to want to engage me in this ghastly warfare? If you think that intelligence is better than fruity work. My intelligence is bewildered by your equivocal instructions. Equivocal meaning, we say na, dono taraf se dhol bajata hai. Uh, he speaks for this side also and this side also. That is equivocal. Therefore, please tell me decisively, decisively which will be most beneficial for me. Now, why does he ask this question? Because he has not got the expected answer, whether a yogi will fight or not. So, because his indirect question was not answered, and Krishna answered his direct question. That's why now the indirect question becomes a direct question. And he asks Krishna directly, Bhai, will you tell me why should I fight? Sort of. Okay. So we will understand this one. Okay. Prior to that, we should understand one more thing. Chapter 2 is the summary of whole of Bhagavad Gita from chapter 3 till 18. So what we have heard uh, from verse number 11 till 37 was about karma kanda verse number 38 till 53 are karma yog then gyan yog and dhyan yog also partly 54 to 72 is 
the additional stuff about dhyan yoga it's about the moksha as aspect also okay and um, abhi what we are going to learn is how a uh, yogi or a sadhu is supposed to behave what are his characteristics any question around this one any no, question no, deepak prabhu garima mata ji rohini mata ji 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 prabhu no, so it is it is important to understand one more point that uh, these uh, questions uh, which arjun asks the first four in the four in the first chapter and fifth in the second chapter the fifth chapter krishna the fifth question krishna purposely does not directly answer and he speaks the whole of bhagavad gita to answer that fifth question okay to jaise na ek book hota hai na we turn one page at a time and then we start discovering more and more and more and more to bhagavad gita is that way to hum log we were on step number 1 few weeks back now we have come to step 2 and abhi hum log step 3 pe ja rahe hain abhi okay okay so 2.55 kiska tha प्रभु प्रहलाद महाराज हो नारद मुनि हो व्यास देव हो एंड सो मेनी पीपल आर देयर ठीक है ओके सो श्री भगवान उवाच श्री भगवान उवाच उवाच प्रजहाती यदा कामान प्रजहाती यदा कामान सर्वान पार्थ मनोगतान ट्रांसलेशन The supreme personality of Godhead said, "O Partha, when a man gives up all varieties of desire for sense gratification, which arise from mental concoction, and when his mind, thus purified, finds satisfaction in the self alone, then he is said to be in pure transcendental consciousness." So. Prabhu Pad, uh, sorry, Prabhu Ji. My understanding by reading this is, uh, we artificially, even we try to uh, get ourselves detached from sense desire. It is very difficult to get detached from sense desires. But a person, if he is engaged in Krishna consciousness, automatically his uh, sense desires will be subside, subsidized. So that will be without any external efforts, like. currently we are so much engrossed we require a lot of efforts to disengage ourselves from uh, sense desires which is practically is difficult but if we are uh, if we are uh, and these desires are sense desires are created from our own manodharm the concussions and mental concussions which we yeah. our beliefs have created right correct you keep uh, because what happened if person is not in spiritual uh, um spiritual mein nahi hai so he is not qualified so he rely on his own mental speculations or whatever he has learned through his journey of life or bringing or looking at uh, whatever knowledge or education he got so <clears throat> and artificially is very difficult to stop all this what manodharmo se jo what we do it so if person is engaged in krishna consciousness so automatically these desires are subsidized 
Okay. The the best way is to the last line, which I think is concluded here, is uh, we should assume ourselves a servant of Krishna or God, right? And uh, that is the way we can we live our life very happily by serving him. Simply by ser servant form, right? Okay. Means, sorry, Prabhu. This is what I could have made up. No problem, Prabhu. Prabhu, and uh, meaning, uh, meaning a kind of a general uh, statement is: please do not feel anything bad, even if you are not able to, you know, speak more points. Also, meaning, it is, it is completely understandable. You, this is just your first attempt. I, as I told you. Even after reading and understanding Bhagavad Gita and speaking on it for three, three times, full Bhagavad Gita, still I feel I have not understood Bhagavad Gita at all. So it is, it is, it is completely fine. Our uh, Krishna only looks at our efforts. So perfectly fine. If two, four points come, jada ho jate hai to, please. So, okay, so now, um, so Sthita Pradnya Tadochate is the last line. Okay, so what does it mean? Tadochate meaning is called as. Hum log, jo definition hota tha na, define so and so stuff. So, hum log bolte thi, so and so is called as. Karke. So, what Tadochate? Kisko bol raha hai wo? Sthita Pradnya ko. Why Sthita Pradnya word is used? Because uh, if you re, uh, re, uh, look at this one, in the 54th verse, there were three words that Arjun spoke. Sthita Pradnya, Samadhistha and Sthita Dhir. Okay. And all three mean the same thing. It, it, meaning the characteristics of all three and definition of all three are same. Arjun used it because similar words were used by Krishna in some of the previous verses. Now, Krishna also answers these and he uses these in words individually in the subsequent verses. But all three are same. So, the first question was how does he speak? What is the language of Sita Pradnyasya? Meaning, how does he speak? Okay. Now, how does he speak doesn't mean that he is asking whether Sanskrit bolta hai, Hindi, Marathi, English kya bolta hai, right? We talked about from a symptoms perspective. So what the, uh, the two characteristics that Krishna talks about is, firstly is Prajahati Yada Kaman, meaning he has given up the desires for material sense gratification completely. Yad, kaman is desires, uh, Prajahati Yada Kaman, meaning to give up completely. That is the first one. And what kind of desires are they? Manogatan. Manogatan meaning developed by the mind. So what happens? We will, when we reach to the third chapter, you will understand this one. Uh, there are multiple levels. So the soul, the pure soul, Atma is the, the high level, highest level. Uske niche aate hai our intelligence. Uske niche aate hai mind. Uske niche aata hai our senses and uske niche aata hai matter. So logically what should happen is the senses should be controlled by the mind and mind should take instructions from the intelligence. Okay. And the intelligence should be, should say that so and so thing is right, so and so thing is wrong. This right thing will help you go towards Krishna Krishna. This wrong thing will take you away from Krishna towards Maya, towards some painful result. And ye intelligence, the mind should obey the instructions and the orders of the intelligence. Only then it will walk on the right path. What happens is intelligence sometimes tells us ki so and so thing wrong hai, mat karo. But fir bhi mind bolta hai, mujhe karna hi hai ye. I want to do it. And we all experience that, right? And this happens because the mind comes under the control of the senses. So on an ideal basis, a CEO should control his executive management. Executive management should control the general management. They should control the officer level. They should control the worker level. But 
बट इमेजिन करो जब वर्कर लेवल स्टार्ट कंट्रोलिंग द मैनेजमेंट लीडरशिप एंड एग्जीक्यूटिव मैनेजमेंट एंड द सीओ तो क्या होगा इट विल बी अस इन द कंपनी तो सिमिलर स्ट्रक्चर अपने इधर भी है इंटेलिजेंस शुड कंट्रोल माइंड शुड कंट्रोल सेंसेस शुड कंट्रोल मैटर बट वो उल्टा होता है सो व्हेन द माइंड कम्स अंडर द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ द सेंसेस एंड वो इंटेलिजेंस का इंस्ट्रक्शन इग्नोर करता है दैट इज व्हेन वी डेवलप अ टेंडेंसी टू कमिट सिंफुल एक्टिविटी तो दैट्स वाई ही सेइंग मनोगतान द डिजायर विच आर बॉर्न आउट ऑफ मेंटल कंकॉक्शन बिकॉज माइंड को क्या लगता है कि सेंसिस हैव टोल्ड देम कि अगर मेरे को ये खाना खाना मिलेगा तो मैं टंग विल बी हैप्पी एंड आई विल बी वेरी हैप्पी अगर मुझे ये गाड़ी मिल जाएगी इफ आई एम एबल टू बाइट देन आई विल बी हैप्पी अगर ये लड़की आई इफ आई गेट हर देन आई विल बी हैप्पी so the mind or the senses constantly dwell on the sense objects and they think that certain sense object if i am able to enjoy it i will be happy and the mind ko constantly force karte rehta hai ye chahiye mujhe ye chahiye ye ladki chahiye ye paisa chahiye ye ye chahiye wo chahiye constantly force karte rehte hain and the mind starts coming under the control of the senses to wo aise time pe intelligence ko ignore karta hai so but the mind thinks That yes, senses बोल रहे हैं मैं हैप्पी हो जाऊंगा तो माइंड ऑल्सो थिंग आई विल ऑल्सो भी हैप्पी एंड वो दैट इज कॉल्ड एज द डिजायर बॉर्न आउट ऑफ मेंटल कंकॉक्शन ओके तो देन द सेकेंड पॉइंट इज दैट द पर्सन हिज माइंड इज प्यूरिफाइड वाई बिकॉज ही हैज फिक्स हिज कॉन्शियसनेस जो चेतना जो होती है इन इन हिज आत्मा अलोन ऑन द सेल्फ now it may be a bit difficult to understand what does it mean by being satisfied in the self okay so this is what prabhupada has mentioned here finds satisfaction in the self alone right what does it mean according to you to find satisfaction in the self any guesses no the self here is talked about the and the soul as in when you were talking about the intelligence which gives the instructions to the mind so above it is the soul which which knows you know that which doesn't waver by the um, by the lucrativeness of what sense is giving instruction to the mind so it's saying wo मतलब यू नो लाइक वी कॉल लव एज व्हाट यू डिस्क्राइब्ड एज अ फीमेल लव ऑफ अराउंड ऑफ व्हाट सेंसेस वुड हैव दिस दिस इज द लव दिस इज लव बाय व्हाइल द सोल नोस दैट द ट्रू लव इज द कृष्णा लव और द गॉड्स लव सो दैट इज व्हेन यू कंफाइन योर इंटेलिजेंस टू द सेल्फ जो सोल कह रही है उसको सुनना मतलब इन दैट सेंस दैट इज करेक्ट वेरी मच अलाइनिंग विद द ओवरऑल मीनिंग so generally what happens is uh, you might have heard these words satchit anand yeah almost have heard it right so satchit anand satchit anand people talk about it so that is not a single word it is a combination of three words satchit and anand sat meaning eternality okay there is no beginning there is no end chit is knowledge there is uh, meaning complete knowledge here. and ananda is bliss yeah ananda obviously so the these are the three characteristics of the soul the soul is eternal soul has complete knowledge about himself okay and soul is always happy or supposed to be always happy okay <clears throat> so being that nature of the soul the soul has a tendency to seek happiness continuously okay now when we are into this material world the soul continues to search happiness but in the material world so what happens is then uh, this the happiness from the material world comes via the contact of senses with the sense objects matlab kya ki our senses ya yeah, panch senses hai they acquire different different knowledge like for example 
you know tasty food when the taste of that food is meaning when the tongue uh, eat, uh, meaning if the food is put on the tongue then the tongue tastes it and then it gives you a satisfaction ki ha ah, kya tasty food hai uh, suppose if um, uh, eyes yeah if they see a movie or some scenery or a girl or a boy or something like that then they become happy so the eyes are used as a medium to take happiness or to draw happiness out of the form or out of the object that we see so that object is a sense object and the eyes are the senses so sense ka sense object object ke sath jab contact hota hai to we draw information out of it and that information gives us some happiness so these this happiness is considered to be the happiness at material level so why uh, it is not right it's because wo temporary hai aaj thoda hum log happy ho jayenge tomorrow we'll get used to it and day after tomorrow we will be bored of it so krishna is saying rather than looking at happiness at a material level go for happiness at a spiritual level which means you should look at eternal permanent happiness and that can never be available at a material level wo transcendental level beyond the material level available rahega and that is the level of the soul a soul is transcendental so which means that if you are trying to seek happiness from this external factors of sense objects you will never become happy so if you want to become eternally happy you need to look at happiness at the level of the soul that is what it means as being satisfied in the self hmm? that is what means by atmanyeva atmana tushtah okay now this these are the two characteristics krishna mentions as a answer to arjuna's first question ka bhasha okay um we have reached almost 9 o'clock okay so jijit prabhu uh, your verse of 56 is actually uh, part of the answer to arjuna's second question okay sita pradnya sa ka bhasha kim asita brajeta kim sorry kim prabhasheta what is his language and that question krishna has answered in verse 56 and 57 together so we can do your verse in the next class otherwise it may take another 15 20 minutes and it will be a little late if you all are okay then we can do it now otherwise we can do it in the next class also class may kar dengi ha sorry नेक्स्ट क्लास ही करते हैं प्रभु हां नेक्स्ट क्लास तो दोनों साथ में हो जाएंगे फिर या ओके ओके एनी क्वेश्चंस व्हाटएवर वी कंप्लीटेड टुडे और इवन अदरवाइज आल्सो प्रभु आई या आई हैव वन क्वेश्चन या सो द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन आई आस्क बिकॉज़ आई डिड नॉट अंडरस्टैंड आई प्रिपेयर एंड नॉट अंडरस्टैंड द थ्री फोल्ड मिसरीज या ओ गुड या श्योर सो अ थ्री फोल्ड मिसरीज आर आध्यात्मिक आदि भौतिक and adi daivik okay what does it mean adhyatmik meaning miser is which are caused to us by our own body by our own mind okay so how does it work let's say while walking i fall down my hand gets fractured okay. so this is a action that i created causing an uh, some bodily harm to myself and uska mujhe takleef kis koi mujhe hi hai mind okay the mind constantly wants certain desire to be fulfilled yeah ki uh, let's say i want a rolls royce but i don't have money so the mind will constantly tell me yaar kya kanjus aadmi hai tu ya kya bhikari aadmi hai tu ma tere paas paisa nahi hai yaar if i had so much money i could have bought a rolls royce so the mind constantly causes us trouble in terms of either desires or there there may be certain event that can happen let's say for example uh, many people are attached to cricket yeah, they want india to win constantly 
so even when we were in our early days also before coming to iskon jab uh, 2003 96 ke world cup ke final mein when india had lost to first in first, first to sri lanka and then to australia it was a very very painful moment for us so these Uh, disturbances that are caused by our own mind this is what is called as adhyatmic misery okay then the second level is adi bautik which means miseries which are caused by other living entities to us how somebody will come okay he will steal away your bag somebody will come he will push you he will fight with you he will beat you some dog will come he will bite you uh, some insect will come uh, it will bite you or some germs will enter your body causing you some infection all that so any and everybody other than yourself which causes some or the other physical or mental harm is called as adi bhautik misery is this clear so far yeah okay. so we talked about adhyatmik and adi bhautik adi bhautik now the third one is adi daivik okay adi daivik meaning those disturbances which are caused by demigods via natural events so let's say when there is no rain at all in a certain area certain city so that means the rain god is unhappy because of some reasons iske liye rain nahi hua hai wahan pe correct so that is a disturbance sometimes there could be a tsunami also sometimes there could be a uh, flooding sometimes there could be too much of heat like we experience here in august july times right too much of excessive heat hota hai that's also possible sometimes lightning can strike and it can burn away houses and what not sometimes um, uh, what, what do you say you know um, akash prithvi a fire forest fires occur right kitna hota hai you know lots and lots of trees in the jungles are burnt away so these are certain miseries which are um, inflicted upon the human society by the demigods which are in relation to the karma that we perform and these karma meaning they are kind of you know collective karma so collective karma is like you remember in 2013 there was huge floods that happened in kedarnath area then right. the tsunami happened sri lanka and tamil nadu and that area right then uh, droughts happen whole villages are impacted too much of floods happen that is also there so many people who are supposed to face these consequences and they are generally brought together via certain event or something like that and then this calamity can happen at the same time so this is orchestrated by nature with the supervision of demigods and then that miser is inflicted upon that group of people that is called as adi daivik so these are the three fold miseries is that clear yes prabhu prabhu this this all this miser uh, the this is because of the bad karma incurred right yes meaning being as a person or a let's say by as a city or uh... so it is a collective bad karma like for example so let's say uh, thousands and thousands of people have done similar activity uh, and they deserve a similar punishment so maybe collectively everybody will get that at a certain point of time okay sir and uh, meaning you you see right uh, sometimes a aero, airplane uh, aeroplane it will crash uh, 200 300 400 people die at the same time so this is a collective karma 
there are there are times when you know we we hear meaning we have seen you might have also seen this that uh, people they are rushing towards the airport to catch a flight and uh, when they miss the flight they blame their karma are yaar kya bekar naseeb hai abhi isko barish hona tha itna traffic tha ye tha wo tha yaar bhagwan hai ki nahi hai kind of you know these statements to come out from them cursing whatever events that happened because of which they missed the flight let's say they are on a europe tour or something like that but when they hear ki that flight crashed and all the people died then they realize why they were lucky to not board the flight tab unko bhagwan ki yaad aati hai bhagwan tumne bachaya mere ko bachaya mere ko ab pehle unko samajhta nahi hai ki bhagwan has a better plan for them wo samajhta nahi hai unko but baad mein samajhta hai so all this is purposely orchestrated that whoever is supposed to face that karma they are brought together by that arrangement and whoever is not supposed to face they are kept away and ye karma fir unko jata hai jaisa jana chahiye waisa thank you bro hare krishna any hmm. question you hmm. found hmm. this hmm. helpful ha hmm. <laughs> please please hmm. Yeah, Prabhu ji. So basically, the threefold misery condition is called as a misery because it's a it's a miserable condition. Uh, it's I mean, it's fun to be where yeah. the person should not be in a misery condition. If the per- person actually starts to accept those conditions as it is and just those, it's categorized the three. Uh, th- it's 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 like three categorization one given by its own more mind and body second by somebody else living and third by the god or the bigger reasons but in all the cases god wants us to accept those situations as the gift of god that's yes. what the message here is and Perfect. not being doing that condition is called like you live in a misery like you know why you there is no reason to be a misery actually it's Correct. more of accept Of the very very valid and very nicely put up. Yes, basically we have no option. The karma will come to us in some or the other manner. We just have to tolerate it. We have absolutely zero control to avoid it. The only way you can avoid is doing bhakti. Karma ani nirdhati kintu cha bhakti bhajam. It's mentioned in Brahma Samhita that only Krishna, when we perform bhakti towards him. can burn away our karma and uh, when we go deeper into bhagavad gita and later into bhagavatam then you will understand wh- how and why does krishna burn this karma and sometimes why he does not burn the kar- uh, karma then we will understand later okay i hope uh, uh, this format is okay and we can continue with this format hmm? Yes, Prabhu. Prabhu, I uh, just want to request. Yeah. I would like you share the link for the video. I mean, uh, audio files. Yeah. Uh, is there any like uh, ar- article? I mean, anything that we can read and you know prepare? Okay, Prabhu. Uh, I prepare detailed notes for myself. I can yeah. actually share that with you, but I consciously, purposely did not share that with you because if I share. Uh, that material is exhaustive you may be able to read and you may be able to speak about it but then what will happen is you know your focus will remain only on my notes my questions my answers here you get an opportunity to try and assimilate as much material possible and collate it and speak about it okay yeah? so main agar wo karunga na to fir boundary ho jayegi aapke liye okay and one humble request is you know please uh, try to uh, remain within the lectures of iskon aap agar kisi aur sampraday ke aap lectures padhoge the the uh, message could be a bit different than what they have given in iskon and it may only confuse you okay so first step aap iskon ke taraf padho seeko when you understand bhagavad gita nicely you can always read messages of other sampraday and take the best of all the worlds that can be done but first step is kon ka rakhwa sath mein 
तो इसके लिए जो भगवत गीता क्लास डॉट कॉम का जो लेक्चर लिंक दिया है उसमें मेनी पीपल हैव गिवन लेक्चर्स ऑन वेरियस वर्सेस गो थ्रू सम ऑफ देम एंड कंस्ट्रक्ट योर मटेरियल ओके थैंक यू ओके हरे कृष्णा सी यू नेक्स्ट वीक हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच